Welcome to another edition of the Justin McDonald Show right here on this Friday night. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us and hanging out. And, you know, we just like to have a good time. That's what this podcast is all about. We just like to talk to interesting and fun people. And sometimes we know the people. Sometimes we don't know the people. But most of the time, I find them on Instagram. Yep. This is the part of the program where we get things kicked off with my Instagram interview. All right, we welcome Farmer Tom with us today. Farmer Tom Lowerman is on the Justin McDonald Show. If you don't know Farmer Tom, I don't know where you've been hiding, but he's one of the most recognizable organic hemp uh, cannabis farmers in the industry. I could say that, right? I can say that. Farmer Tom? I think so. <laughs> well, I just said it, so I hope <laughs> it's true. Um, you've been at this at a long time, and your brand has been out there for a long time. I have a Farmer Tom sticker on several things that I own. Um, tell the folks just a little bit about yourself. Uh, I like to you know, talk to people and get the story straight from the horse's mouth, if you will. Sure. Yeah. When, when did things start for you? Uh, tell me a little bit about your, your background and, and, you know, you can take your time, but uh, this isn't a, you know, what do you call that? What's that one guy? Ken Burns movie. This is not a Ken Burns movie. We don't have that much okay. time. We got about 15 <laughs> minutes. Or so. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What, so tell us a little bit about what's going on. Okay, well, you know, a uh, little bit about my history. I was born and raised in San Diego. Um, I started landscaping at 12 years old, which really got me in touch with the earth and plants and compost and planting and irrigation and all the things that go along with farming. And then um, uh, me and my wife were part of the first collective garden in San Diego in 1998. Mm. um it got we got raided in 99 where i got and this was all in san diego 48 plants yeah it was all in san diego okay it was like uh, you know in the mid to late 90s and uh got arrested down there uh went and spent a night in jail and that kind of kicked me off into my um advocacy you know once you've been arrested the worst <laughs> thing that could happen to you has happened already so a lot of fear and indecision and stuff uh, kind of goes out the window. Um, from there, um, you know, we wanted to do organic farming, worked with a couple organic farms down in San Diego, and we grew uh, cannabis for our patients. Our co-op was set up a little bit different than most co-ops. We really didn't have the, the jeweler's case out there or anything, you know, it was a, a real traditional co-op where you bought a light, paid $50 a month, and on the counter system you got to take whatever you want we'd hang all the plants they'd go in there with scissors and baggies and mark what they took and take it and that was it it was pretty simple pretty straightforward not a lot of cash going back and forth uh, and it worked out really well for us for uh, several years until um until the, the arrest happened which kind of put the whole thing into uh, into chaos basically they just wanted to get rid of us we were in a um mm. a, affluent part of san diego hillcrest um, yeah. we were located behind the oldest gay bar in san diego and uh, we had a nice a nice situation so the you know the the police wanted to they just wanted to get rid of us uh, we were too out in the open as far as they were concerned and they just wanted back to then in, in early california the police really didn't honor the medical marijuana laws at all they just said oh, we're going to arrest you anyways and we'll let the courts figure it out Gotcha. And uh, so that all went down and, uh, um, you know, me and my wife eventually moved to Williams, Oregon for a couple of years, whereas I was a um, farm manager in an organic seed farm down there. We did a lot of wild crafting, um, picking herbs, you know, um, in their natural state through out Southern Oregon. We did chickweed and arnica and hellebore and uh yeah i know all these things I, I grew up as a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh i mean i grew up as kind of a hippie kid and my mom used all those things all the time you know uh, natural herbs arnica a lot i had a lot of bruises as a kid falling down playing hard, nice. getting beat up by the older girls you know things like that yeah 
Yeah, I always uh, had that. So you were doing that kind of stuff, and then uh, you had the seed farm going as well. Yeah, and then uh, the seed farm closed down, and we uh, decided it was time to get our own place. Uh, the prices back then were pretty expensive in Southern Oregon, which they kind of have been since the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we decided uh, to move north. And we moved up outside of Portland here in Vancouver, Washington, a place called Brush Prairie. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been here for 17 years now, and uh, we really love it here. You know, this has been our home. It's my little farm. It's my getaway. It's my sanctuary. I mean, I'd rather be there here than anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, there's something about the farm. You know, I love going out to farms. I live in wine country as well. But there's tons of farms. I got hazelnut farms around me and wineries and all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's just nice to to work in the city and drive home, you know, to that. Uh, yeah, I, definitely. I really, uh, I think that's why I live out there and I love it so much. But um, you're not just hanging out at the house all the time with the dogs and the wife and the family. You're you're off doing other things as well. Um, you do a well, lot. I got to support. I got to support my farming habit. You know. <laughs> yeah, you got a farming habit. Farming that's is right. like an it's like an addiction. You know <laughs> what I mean? You kind of got to be able to support it. That's right. Uh, so That's right. I travel a lot. Last year was a busy year. We were, I started off the year doing these uh, um, hemp farming 101, the good, the bad, and the ugly, where I really educate people on how to maneuver through the industry and uh, keep themselves safe and give them good information on um, how to get the plants in the ground and uh, watering and fertilizing and all the processes all the way through. A lot of farmers jump into um, hemp and they really don't know the amount of work that it takes. It's yeah. like uh, 10 times the effort of hay or anything else like that, where they just plant it and then they come and cut it down and bale it up and it's ready for market. <laughs> well, cannabis and hemp aren't that type of animal. You really, there's a lot of work in between. And, uh, uh, you know, so that's what I do. So I did the hemp farming 101. We did in Southern Oregon. We did one in um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Did one in Salt Lake City. Uh, then I did one in Puerto Rico. And then I went back to Puerto Rico and then I got stuck there through COVID. So I was there for two months on Puerto Rican lockdown, which is pretty serious. Uh, mm -hmm. They took it really seriously down there. I remember that you were, you were stuck there for a really long time, right? Yeah, two months. <laughs> wow. It seemed like for, it seemed like forever. Luckily, two I months. was in a really nice place, and you know, um, but just just even being locked down in a house for that long is. I mean, we tried to go to the beach, and I'm an old surfer, and I really wanted to get in the water, but the cops were at the beach every day, and so. But uh, I enjoyed it. Um, cops at the beach to keep you from surfing because of COVID nineteen. Right unbelievable wow. wow yeah well they had to be really strict you know nobody could go out on sundays because of church and stuff and mm -hmm. they were just super strict about it and uh, i kind of respected that you know at the beginning of the pandemic not everybody really knows what's going on so i got the first flight out and uh came back home and then instantly got uh hired to help uh um, these this group down in uh outside of coos bay Mm -hmm. um, run their operation. They were doing 50 acres and 58,000 plants and they needed, there were students in our school and they just wanted some hands on through the whole season. So that's wow. what I did. I was there to uh, supervise the whole process and uh, we turned, it turned out pretty good. Everything was nice and even. We've got a, we got a, you know, all the flowers were beautiful. Mm. Um, that's amazing though. I mean, that is amazing that people are growing that much hemp. I just, it blows my mind. But Farmer Tom, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, I want to talk to you more about, you know, where that industry is going and yeah. how many people are growing now and things like that. Um, I really would like to uh, see where you think the industry is going. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll have more with Farmer Tom Lowerman right here on the Justin McDonald Show on TalkCast PDX. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. It is the Justin McDonald Show on a Friday night. We're having ourselves a good time. We're having a nice chat with our good friend, farmer Tom Lowerman. And we've been sitting here discussing uh, hemp. And then, of course, we got his backstory, you know, getting busted and things like that. That will change your whole perspective on everything, um, especially back then, right? I mean, yeah, they weren't messing around back then, that's for sure. Yeah, they definitely weren't messing around. But uh, here we are in a new age, a new world. Uh, everything is flourishing. It's starting to look good on the uh, national legalization of cannabis as well. And But the CBD world and the hemp world is huge. And you're a part of that world. And you were talking about a group you were helping um, down south uh, in southern Oregon um, before we went to the break, just recap that really quick. And then I want to kind of go and talk about where the industry's going. So uh, I met these guys at an event that uh, Sophia put on uh, down there in Southern Oregon at Hemp University. And I met these two gentlemen and they really wanted to get into hemp. They had some money behind them and um, they thought it would uh, make some, you know, for some good, they had a big piece of land and they had really nice prop uh, soil and they were ready to go so um, I mean I told them all the dangers you know like when you get started and on any hemp grow first thing you got to do is have a customer and uh, yeah. the next mm -hmm. thing you need to do is have drying and curing and storage space for it before you even buy you know buy a seed mm -hmm. so we have hemp farming academy it's the first online hemp farming school me and a guy named Dustin um, who approached me at an event you know, um, gave me the opportunity. Um, well, we're working on two years now. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, we're working on 150 students worldwide and teaching and educating is really where my heart's at. I really enjoy seeing my students doing so well and growing amazing crops and uh, flourishing in the hemp industry. Well, the hemp industry has a big glut um, in the market, uh, especially from you know, the, you know, there's still product out there from the um, 2019 uh, farming season and then the 2020 season. So the price is like plummeted. It's at uh, 60 cents for CBD and they don't even care what the uh, CBD ratio is. Mm. And they don't even for care? CBG it's, yeah, it's for CBG, it's 60 cents a, p a pound and it really needs to be somewhere a lot more like ten dollars a pound for everybody to make money yeah. for the farmer to make money for the processor to be able to sell it now crude right now is going a couple hundred dollars a kilo where it really should be at between eight and a thousand dollars a kilo to have a sustainable market it takes 40 pounds um to uh to make a uh a kilo of uh, distillate and uh so mm. the the numbers really don't add up unless it's at that at that price point and the processors and the farmers can make some money so everybody knows or at least most people think they know cbd cbg let's talk about that for a second um yeah it's the precursor benefit, benefit it's, the, CBG. it's a yeah it's like the mother of cannabinoids it's the precursor to cbd and thc and it's, uh, it's underdeveloped, uh, uh, doesn't have any terpenes in it. And the terpenes mm. are which, um, and the trichomes, the terpenes are the part that really hold the, the cannabinoids in place. So it's really like a dry, um, it's really like a, uh, you know, like a, a dry, uh, you know, a trichome. Mm -hmm. so they really easily fall off so you could take a, a cbg bud and put it up in front of a mirror and put like paper underneath and then tap it and watch it snow and fall off wow so the terpenes hold the, all those things in place and give you the nice flavor but in the terpenes there's also uh, thc and so um, with the new rules and stuff the safest plant to grow last year and probably this year too will be <laughs> CBG. Um, I find it really beneficial. It really lowers, uh, seems to lower my blood yeah. pressure and keep me calm. And I uh, add it to my nighttime regiment that I uh, consume before I, I go to bed to help me get a good night's sleep. Yeah, I've always heard good things about CBG. And uh, I always try to look for that in products when I'm out uh, hunting for cannabis products and uh, hemp products when I'm out there running around doing my thing. 
let's talk about where the industry's going. I see, I see even the conservatives, conservative of conservative Republican shill talk show host pitching CBD products now. Um, it's like a big craze sort of, but it, we know that it works for certain things and does certain things. What do people have to be on the lookout for? Well, you want to get the top quality products, you know, you're looking for water soluble. Um, a lot of these oils, when these people consume oils over a long period of time, mm -hmm. you know, they, uh, they got to go through the liver and basically the liver is this big filtration system. And if it's all clogged up with all these oils all the time, they develop, seem to develop liver issues. So um, as far as CBD, you know, CBD goes, uh, I think there's a lot of huge benefits, but you're looking for a more broad spectrum. Um, you want all the terpenes and you want, you know, you want the entourage effect. You want the terpenes and the different cannabinoids and you yeah, want a nice blend yeah. of it all. The full and spectrum. hopefully with the, yeah, hopefully with the Moore's Act, when we legalize THC, Mm -hmm. We can get more compounds that'll be easier and ready or available to uh, to distribute to the public. So you want water soluble. Of course, you want organic. Um, you want um, the product to come from a, um, a certified facility. There's a lot of things to look out for because there's a lot of there's a lot of flim flamming going on out there right yeah, now. Yeah, I was gonna say gotta, there's got to be some snake oil salesmen out there. You know. Oh, no doubt there there are. So uh, we watch try to place. help everybody, um, yeah, you know, make their way through the forest of information <laughs> and disinformation. <laughs> so if someone wants to uh, get in touch with you and learn a lot more about everything else, uh, how do they get in touch with you? Now we know you um, from Instagram and for, of course from life, but uh, this is the segment on the show where we call the, my Instagram interview, but how do people, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah people we're get... at Instagram, farmer, Tom, uh, uh, farmer, Tom Lowerman. Um, uh, we're all over Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. I'm also on some Twitter. I do some tweeting every now and again, tweeting and, uh, we can find uh, more information at farmer, Tom and hemp farming Academy. You can learn more about our school. Yeah, our school, like I said, we've been in business for two years now, and we offer a along with the video courses, we offer a Facebook page where you can answer any questions. And part of the deal is I'll always give my students, you know, five, 10 minutes on the phone. So if they're ever in a pinch, oh. they can pick up the phone and call me. I'm totally open. You know, I'm, I'm a guy who answers this phone. That's invaluable. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, it just that's Amazing that your students can just, you know, reach out and talk to you when they need to. Yeah. I mean, I got to make it a win-win for everybody. And, yeah. and, you know, if I can help, you know, through the videos, if they're not getting something or they run into a pinch or they're trying to bet somebody out, yeah. I'm more than happy to talk to them on the phone and walk them through it. Well, Farmer Tom, I'm so glad that you got to join me tonight on the Justin McDonald show. Of course, we're going to be doing some other things. Uh, this, of course, for our good friends here at TalkCastPDX.com where you can listen to other great shows. We have Citizen Smith now, and we have Channel Weird with Clyde Lewis and Keep Portland Paranormal, and we got a lot of other great shows coming. But we're also doing some stuff from Canacast 420 again, and we hope to have you involved at some point with several things that we got going on there. So uh, I just appreciate your time, and I appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate you as a human being as well. And like I tell everybody who comes on this show, peace. <laughs> peace. Peace, yeah, buddy. buddy. Thanks so much for everything. You got it. Hey, I want to thank Farmer Tom Lauerman once again for being on the program. We thank him very, very much so. And hopefully we'll have him on again in the near future. All right. That's going to do it for the show tonight. We, you know, we're just kind of doing some interviews right now. We're going to have some cool things coming up. I can't wait to bring them to you. I'm being kind of sneaky. Yeah, that's right. Also, check out my other podcast, The Quick Hit, on CannaCast420.com, where I chat with people in the cannabis industry. On the latest edition, I talked with Troy Moore, who's the founder of Oregon's Finest and Ideal Farms here in Oregon. So it's a good one. You should check it out. It'll only take you four minutes and 20 seconds. All right, that'll do it. We're all done. The Justin McDonald Show complete for tonight. Thank you so much, and until next time... Peace.